Um, so calling to order the Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 meeting of the Gig Harbor Arts Commission at 10.07 a.m. Uh, roll call, Charlie Glock Jackson, uh, Chair. Dan Jennifer? Okay, Dan. Uh, Samantha? Samantha Kelly, Commissioner. Jennifer? Jennifer Beard, Commissioner. Um, Lynn? Lynn Stevenson, Commissioner. Um, Robin is not here. She's at an airport. Um, and um, is Linda here? No, no, no Linda yet. Okay. Um, let us then move on to approval of the special meeting minutes of the May 11th meeting. Um, has any, uh, and also the May 12th meeting. Um, has everyone read those and are there any connect corrections or additions? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 11th? Everybody's muted. I'll make motion, motion to Jennifer Beard, motion to approve. Okay, um, so Jennifer made the motion, Dan seconds it. This is May 11th meeting, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, uh, minutes of the May 11th meeting are accepted as uh, presented. Uh, minutes of the May 12th meeting. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 12th meeting. Second? Second. Second. Okay. It's been moved and approved, moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the meeting of May 12th. Minutes of the meeting of May 12th. All in favor say aye. 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 And we have approved the minutes of the May 12th Arts Commission meeting. Um, so first things first are, uh, is a presentation that I'm really looking forward to um, by Olga Torres Ingebretson. Um, Olga is one of the board members of our new newspaper that we're about to launch sometime in the next few months. And she's also the chair of, um, or the dean of Tacoma Community College Gig Harbor branch. And um, Olga and I have been talking about ways that um, the college and the Arts Commission um, might find ways to cross pollinate and work together. And that's a very exciting possibility. So take it away, Olga. Good morning. Thanks for giving me space in, in your meeting today. I um, feel very fortunate to be here. I'm just gonna set up and see. I don't, yep, you've given me the share screen. Most disabled participant. Okay, so it's not Molly, it's not letting me share the screen. If you want to pull that up. Can you help Josh? Because I can't find it either. I can make her a host. You Usually should, the ellipsis there should is be, in the corner. There should be a green button at the bottom of your screen towards the middle. It says share screen. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? If you yep. click on that. Yeah, that it says work. the host. Oh. It says the host disabled the participant screen sharing. Oh, well, let me see what I can do. Have that one have up before. Yeah, this is new. I don't see the place where I should allow her to be share the screen. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. I have it on my desktop. If you want me to pull it up. Sure. That, that's perfect, Molly. I, I, I want to be mindful of your time. So if you want to get it queued up and I'll just tell you when to pass a slide, we can do it that way if you don't mind. We can be a little flexible with our time, Olga. Okay. <laughs> I'm always sensitive to those things, especially with Zoom. The Zoom fatigue is real. 
Do you just want me to mm -hmm. resend it to you really quick, Molly? No, I started I, in that way. To now I can't get back to my Zoom meeting to share my screen. This is, <laughs> there we go. This is so bizarre. Okay, here we go. All right. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Olga Torres Engelbritson. I am the Dean just shortly under two years of TCC Gig Harbor campus. Prior to that, I worked at a different institution and um, funny, uh, fun, fun fact was I actually took my first class as an adult student at the TCC Gig Harbor campus. So uh, I'm definitely committed to the community and I live in the community. So. I'm very excited to be here to present to you at your uh, meeting this morning. Um, slide, please. So TCC Gig Harbor has been in the community uh, since uh, late 70s, early 80s, if you can believe that. There was downtown Gig Harbor, different locations that they would rent, and then eventually um, early 90s, they built our location on Hunt Street. And um, so we've been there uh, for quite some time now. Uh, people usually associate that location with just our Running Start students, and that's it. But actually, there's more. Uh, we have a student could complete an associate's degree. We have our Running Start students. This year, we kicked off and we have our first cohort back. Um, with Fresh Start students. Um, and the other program that we just recently brought back this quarter was our Certified Nursing Assistant Program, which is the NAC program. So we're really excited about that. And then we have our Continuing Education, which is what I'm here to talk to you about. Slide, please. Slide again. <laughs> if you hit uh, the next, yes. So today I'm here to talk to you about our Right in the Harbor Conference. Slide. Uh, Cursor again. So our Gig Harbor campus has been hosting, continuing education has been hosting the conference since 2015. Cursor again. And this year, yep, go right ahead. And <laughs> this year, our conference will be held on November 6th, 5th and 6th. So it's always the first, November, uh, the first weekend in November. It's Friday evening and all of Saturday. Um, what we have is a keynote speaker. You can hit that cursor two more times, I believe. Yep, perfect. Um, the keynote speaker, as well as that keynote speaker, the next day will kick off our Saturday with the masterclass for our community. And then throughout the day on Saturday, participants will attend various workshops. Slide, please. Slide again. And you can go ahead and push it all the way through and I'll read. There you go. Um, one more time. Actually, one more time. There you go, <laughs> sorry. The Right in the Harbor Conference is a regional conference and it's really targeted to a variety of styles of riders. When I say regional, um, we're, we're always surprised where our participants come from and our um, presenters do as well. So it, they are coming from outside of Seattle, Bellingham, Seattle proper, all the way down to Vancouver, Portland area. So it's gotten a reputation in the community. Um, as they like to say, the conference was crafted by writers for writers. And the variety of workshops, as you can see, range anywhere from fiction to um, your publication and learning how to publish, uh, publish your writings, um, genres of mystery, uh, noir, you know, history, it all varies. And then also just that self uh, improvement, overcoming obstacles to writing and what is, how is that impacting you? So it, it really is a one-stop shop for writers in the community, established writers, as well as new writers. Slide, please. Some of our past presenters, and I stand corrected, Mark Lindquist was not a past presenter. He was our board member and an MC at one time. So. I did not edit this one. I apologize. I want to make sure I clarify that. But we have had J.A. Jance. We've had Jim Lynch. We've had Garth Stein, um, Erica Bauermeister. And this year we will have Bronwyn Scott. Um, so we're pretty excited about that because last year we actually didn't have a keynote. Slide, please. With COVID-19 and right in the harbor, as I previously mentioned, we didn't have a keynote speaker. We had to pivot at the last minute. We really thought 
We're going to get back in the building in six weeks. We're going to get back in the building in 12 weeks. You know, by the time we hit, you know, I don't know, four months, we were like, we're not getting back in the building. We need to figure something out. And so we really did pivot. And with the Zoom platform, we started thinking out of the box. There was a moment where we actually considered not having the conference at all. It's a small, intimate conference. It's usually 80 to 85 people because of the size of our building. It is kept small and we want people to have that intimate um, experience. Uh, so what we realized was we stand a chance of getting lost, getting lost in COVID, getting lost of not being present in the community. So we were like, forget it. We're going to do this. We're going to figure it out. So we developed the platform of going live with Zoom not having a keynote speaker, which is a huge piece of our conference, was very, um, it was weird. We, we really were going out of the box on this one. What we ended up doing was expanding our um, offerings for workshops, as well as what we had never done before was recording the sessions, giving everyone access who participated in the conference to the sessions up to 30 days. So as you're used to going to a conference, you're like, yeah, I got to see this, but I really wish I could have been there and I can't be in two places at one time. This allowed participants to have that really rich experience of being able to not only access the videos, but also access the handouts that you receive because it's very hands-on. It's a very hands-on conference. So those pieces are important to the participants. Um, we were shocked what a great response we received from participants. Um, they really, <laughs> they enjoyed doing it from home. Uh, they enjoyed having that convenience of being able to go back and knowing that they were gonna be able to see it um, and not have that stress of which one do I attend. So the feedback made us really happy and, and we were super proud. We're a small, we're a small staff in Gig Harbor and, and basically we did a crash course with IT and a lot of practicing and a lot of passing the baton, just like you guys were just doing. How have I never been able, I can always give somebody else access to sharing and suddenly it didn't work, right? So we, we worked through all of those glitches possible. Um, and so this year we are going forward uh, with our 2021 conference and we're expanding it, our virtual opportunities. Um, we have our keynote speaker. She stayed with us, even though Bronwyn understood why we weren't going to do a keynote last year. She committed to be a part of the, con uh, the conference this year. And not only is she really committed to being a part of the conference, she's so excited about it that she's offering us extra time of her personal time to participate throughout Saturday. So we will have our Friday evening event with our keynote speaker. She'll offer her masterclass, and this is new. What she is offering this year is to, for our new um, early bird registrants, uh, we've reduced the cost so we can't give an early bird registration uh, reduction fee. So what we're doing is early birds will be able to sign up for one 10 minute session one-on-one -on -one with the author. The day of the conference, which is really unique. It's just, you get to ask questions. You get to give her a couple of pages of your works prior to, she'll review it. She'll give you feedback. Um, so that's a really big thing. And again, we have our wonderful um, variety of presenters. Slide please. So with that, we're, we're really hoping, we've got a lot of goals set. Obviously, I'm behind the eight ball. Basically, the bulk of my time at TCC Gig Harbor has been spent working from home in COVID because I literally started and then we went into COVID. <laughs> so I, I have a lot of goals and aspirations for TCC Gig Harbor in general, but I have goals and aspirations for our continuing education program and specifically our biggest event, which is the Right in the Harbor. Um, we want to start developing more partnerships, looking at the Arts Commission and the events that you have and, and the art and the things that you're doing in the community. It seems like it lends itself for us to find a way to be able to partner and um, develop and grow both of our programs. Um, so we're also uh, wanting to uh, kick off an advisory committee. Uh, we know, as my small staff and I discuss this, that we can only take the conference so far with our limited experience of writing, as well as 
our networks in the community, we need to start expanding it because people really are are letting us know that they don't want to see this go away. And so we really want to enhance that experience and we can only do so much and we're limiting the conference by not opening it up to have more eyes and ears that can help us grow this. And then sponsorships. At one point, there were some really great partnerships and sponsorships with the community. And I'm hoping that somehow we can either um, invite you to sponsor or partner with us in some way. I'm Again, Charlie, I keep saying this, I'm very mindful of your time. So this is my presentation and I'm happy to take questions and answer any um, uh, thoughts or gaps that I left here. Olga, thank you so much. This is so exciting. So uh, any questions or comments from uh, commissioners? I have one question. It's Jennifer from the Harbor History Museum. Um, I'm just curious, the, um, the advisory committee that you mentioned, is that simply for right in the Harbor or is that a larger scope with the continuing education program as right. well? Right now, it is for the right in the harbor, but yes, it, it, I'm eventually developing more relationships for our continuing ed. But this Thank focus you. right now is for the right in the harbor. Thank you. Thank you. I think we had a, a partnership with you as well years ago as I'm going through files. I think so. That was before me as well. Um, yeah. But I, I remember hearing about that. So. <laughs> Well, and I'm happy to meet with you at a different time to discuss that further. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Lynn, did you have a question? Yeah, hey, Olga. Um, I just saw, I noticed the City of Gig Harbor logo on that uh, poster there, and I was wondering what, what relationship that was for sponsorship with the event in the past. As am I. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, you know what happens um, when people leave and things are not documented, the knowledge <laughs> leaves with them. And, oh. and really I'm going through, I'm, I'm gonna be just straight up honest with you. The knowledge left with with Janine okay. and, and she had a great commitment to the community and whatnot. And unfortunately it's not written anywhere. So I'm redeveloping it and seeing that, I know that the city had a relationship with them. I don't know what that looks like. And so I take that as an opportunity for us to grow that. And what does that look like for us as being the newbies here? Oh, okay. Molly. Uh, yeah, our past uh, marketing director, Lori Lunn and Karen Scott were both very active with the uh, Writers Conference. And that's where the support came through is through our marketing tourism hmm. uh, department. I'm sure somebody could go back and look and find out the amounts that were provided in the past if you're really interested, but it's a whole new ball game, you know, every year anyway, so. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, maybe Charlie's talked to you about our, the Endeavor Grant Program, the Creative Endeavors Program, and it seems like that might be appropriate for applying for a grant through the Arts Commission, but. Yeah, I, I can, um, I think that's a wonderful idea, Lynn. And um, Olga, I don't think we've talked about that very extensively, but the, the uh, grants for this year are closed, but we'll be opening up um, 2022 grants real early next year. So um, uh, assuming, of course, that the city council um, sees fit to um, budget for them again. And we're hoping that they will because they seem to be very popular and very successful. So we can keep in touch about that. Another possibility from the city might be um, a lodging tax grant. You're mentioning that um, you draw student and, and it probably wouldn't apply if you're going to continue to be virtual, but if you're able to get to be um, an in-person uh, conference again, you're mentioning that people come from Bellingham and Seattle and so forth. So if it's something that is bringing heads, putting heads in beds, that probably right. would qualify as for a lodging tax grant. That's and great. Yeah. And certainly our, the city's marketing director, um, Laura Pettit, who's just a crackerjack. Um, if you send her press releases and um, information, she'll be very, her job is to disseminate information of things that are happening in Gig Harbor. Perfect. 
That's wonderful. Yeah. And what are your thoughts? I'm sorry, did anyone else have other questions? What are your thoughts in, in regards to um, inviting someone from your commission to be a part of our advisory committee? Um, I, that could be a very, um, a very good possibility. Let me, um, but we're, we're missing one, we're, our vice chair is not with us today. And, um, uh, but between the seven of us, we might be able to come up with somebody that would be an advisor for that. And we're in the grass, we're in the, you know, the baby stages of that and, and um, hopefully prior to the conference having, um, having an initial meeting. Uh, so it, there's time. There Great. is time. Right offhand, are, are any commissioners interested in being on the advisory committee for the Ride in the Harbor um, conference? Or maybe we need to think about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Any other questions or comments? Samantha. Yeah, Olga, it just might be helpful to understand the scope and scale, time commitment, et cetera, that you're looking for on that advisory committee. I'm very, very, very mindful of that. And so I'm thinking more of like a quarterly meeting. So basically, if we go off the quarters of the college, maybe three times a year to meet. So fall, winter and spring. Um, I, I'm very aware of everyone else's commitments and full time jobs. And so I want to make it as um, welcoming as possible, but also very mindful of um, other commitments that we all carry. Um, so I think if there was a, you know, three times we meet for two hours, and I think that we could really make a difference in, in, in sharing information as well as getting and receiving information from you all. That's my initial thought of that. I mean, I'm sure anyone else may more than welcome to offer their thoughts and opinions. Any other questions or comments? I thought Linda unmuted. Linda? Yes, I did unmute and I was interested in volunteering, but that's passed already. Oh, um, I don't know why it's passed. Because well, you said you were going to think about it. Oh, no, if you, if you, <laughs> if you want to volunteer right now, we will not stop you. I'm good with that then. I'll volunteer. Thank you, Linda. Linda, you I bet. only see your first name up on the screen. It's Linda Sutherland. Sutherland. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. You betcha. I'll get your contact information and I'm happy to drop my contact information and in. there is no chat box. But okay. Molly and Charlie have my contact information right. to drop in a chat box to all of you. <laughs> right. Thank you, Linda. That's um, thank you very much for making that commitment. Um, I, it seems like it's going to be a very enjoyable thing, and I know you're going to be um, you, you'll just be a real asset to that committee for for Olga. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, definitely. It's it's um, it's going to be a different uh, keynote speaking event. But usually, when we're in the building, the keynote <laughs> event is is actually there's a little um, happy hour, hors d'oeuvre hour prior to the event starting. So it, it's a lovely way for participants to engage and and mingle and really and just really highlight our community as well, not just our building, but our lovely community here in Gig Harbor. So um, I'm excited and I'm excited to start expanding our partnerships throughout the community. So thank you so much for allowing me this space. Great, great, thank you. And Linda, you can sort of be our liaison then if you would please, uh, as a member of their advisory commission, so that um, when, it, when we are ready to uh, start opening up for Creative Endeavor Grants. Um, you can make sure that Olga and her cohorts are um, aware of that process. And then let us know um, how it's progressing. Um, we'll just make time in Arts Commission meetings for a report from you. So thanks again, Linda. <clears throat> and Olga, thank you so much. Thanks, I appreciate this time. And uh, I will get with Molly to um, find out the history of what that looked like in the past and hopefully get better information and understanding 
<laughs> Molly's face. Unfortunately, no, you won't. Tomorrow's my last day. So, <gasps> oh no. I'll send a message to Laura to see if she can scare up some information. But, like I say, it, it's like you're talking about lost in the past with the, the past marketing directors that are no longer here. And there's been a couple interim positions in between. And I don't know that we could come up with much um, without having to go back and reread. And, and there wasn't a lot of great documentation either. Right. So maybe an old budget or something might have something in it. <clears throat> it's pretty loosey goosey. I'll do a quick search in our box. Uh, share drive and see if something from the writers conference comes up like a contract and I'll let you know if there is. I'd appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry. I've only worked with you for a minute. So. <laughs> You're better <laughs> off without me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Doubt that very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Olga. Wow. Thanks, Olga. Thank you. And I just, I just don't, I don't want to be reminded that this is Molly's last day. I'm, I'm going to start crying in a minute, I think. Oh, no. <clears throat> so um, so um, that's exciting. I think there are lots of good, good possibilities for working, um, collaborating with um, TCC. I'm, I'm excited about that. So on to the comprehensive plan update, old business number one. And um, let's see, Carl, I guess this is, um, this is you. It is. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate that. Um, uh, so as most of you know, this has been kind of a, an ongoing project uh, waiting in the wings uh, for a while now. The Arts Commission applied for this um, comprehensive plan amendment back in, I believe it was 2018 originally. Um, and it's been uh, sort of moved forward by council a couple of times now. Uh, the first time it was moved forward as, as staff time allowed, and unfortunately staff time did not allow, so we were not able to process it. Uh, we brought it back again uh, this year on the um, comprehensive plan amendment docket, and it was um, moved forward again by the uh, city council, uh, and they moved it to um, the Planning Commission for study. Um, and as part of that then, um, we're working on a couple of um, comprehensive plan amendments at the same time. And uh, within the budget this year, uh, there was a line item to allow for uh, us to bring on a consultant to help us out with this, with this work uh, and taking it through the uh, legislative, the, the amendment through the legislative process. And so that's where uh, Mr. Grimes comes in here. Uh, Bill Grimes is uh, from uh, SCJ Alliance. His firm was chosen to assist us in this um, uh, amendment process. Uh, and so first order of business uh, in talking with Bill, we felt was uh, uh, to take the opportunity to meet with um, the proponents for the amendment and kind of see where everybody's everybody's at, get an opportunity to uh, uh, get any ideas out on the table, an opportunity for Bill to ask any questions that he has so that he can um, perform his um, project admirably and, uh, you know, get to a get to a good, a good result that everybody's happy with. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Grimes from SDG Alliance. All right. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you, thank you, Commission, for inviting me to participate, and and Olga also. Thank you very much for your your presentation. Um, it's a it's a potent reminder that that the arts uh, are more than just visual, and uh, and I think that's that's something that I definitely have to take note of as I'm as I'm looking through the arts and culture element and, and figuring out how we can best best move this forward. So anyway, it's exciting to hear about what's going on. Uh, my, my wife uh, has a master's degree in uh, creative writing, so it's uh, something I'm somewhat sensitive to in a, in a good way. So, uh, so anyway, what, what I was hoping to be, able to be able to do today is really not as much uh, make a presentation uh, as maybe uh, get a conversation going. So you can bring me up to speed. Uh, a little bit on what the, the hopes and dreams are for the Arts Commission and uh, more broadly arts and culture in, uh, in Gig Harbor uh, and how, how we can make this comprehensive plan element 
as, uh, as powerful and effective as possible. So maybe, maybe what, what I could do um, first off is ask, ask the commission a question, um, why in 2018, and maybe even before then, uh, did you feel the need to have a separate element in the comprehensive plan rather than living with arts and culture as a subset of parks and recreation? I can guess, but uh, I'd rather not. So maybe, maybe I, can, I can hear from you uh, and, and learn a little bit what your motivations were uh, three or so years ago when you were talking about this and advancing it to the council. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll um, jump into the deep end of that pool, Bill. Thank you very much. And um, welcome and thank you so much for taking time um, to let us have this conversation. Uh, it's very important. Um, actually, um, we started this process actually in about 2015. Um, and it began because I, um, who was a member of the Arts Commission at that time, um, happened to read a, um, a newsletter from the Bainbridge Island Arts and Culture Foundation that um, th there was a letter from the director who, that mentioned Bainbridge Island's arts element in their comprehensive plan. And I thought, wait a minute, that an arts element in a comprehensive plan is that obviously is a thing. It's a possibility. Um, does Gig Harbor have this? Um, no, Gig Harbor didn't. So I started researching other cities, other jurisdictions that do have comprehensive, that, that have arts elements in their comp plans. Seattle, Olympia, Tacoma, Wenatchee, I think Walla Walla has one. We found um, a number of cities, um, most of them bigger than Gig Harbor, but, but many of them um, are same size that have, the, and in which the city has made a commitment to make arts and culture um, uh, a, com a commitment. And so we started in 2015 to work on this and we got as far, our, we were successful to a point. And that point was we were able to get a text amendment to the parks, to the pros plan. And um, I, I thought that that was a triumph and it was in some ways, but then I realized that that's not what we, that's not what we need. We need a standalone element in the comprehensive plan that in which the city makes a commitment to the fact that arts and culture in all their forms matter. And as you said, very astutely, art, art is more than statues in parks. It's more than pictures on walls. Art is music and dance and theater, um, design, um, writing, poetry, prose. Our art is everything that's a creative a creative endeavor. Anything that celebrates our creative spirit is art, capital A art. And arts and culture are very linked throughout history, um, which is why we added the word culture to our comprehensive plan um, amendment. Um, so in, in 2018, um, we put together a, an ad hoc committee of, of um, citizens who spent six months meeting every single week um, to craft a standalone arts and culture element. Uh, the first thing we did was do a survey uh, to determine is there an interest in the arts in Gig Harbor? Um, if so, what's the extent of that interest? Um, how important are arts and culture to the people of Gig Harbor? How many people uh, make art, um, play music, or um, uh, write poetry, or paint pictures, or do photography? Uh, how many people in Gig Harbor are engaged in some kind of creative activity? How many people make a living by doing art? Mm -hmm. um, how many people have somebody in their family that makes a living in doing art? And the um, the responses were really quite astounding. The city's marketing department worked with us to uh, publicize the survey. We also handed out little cards um, 
at the um, Maritime Gig Parade, have you answered your survey yet? We had um, more than 800 responses to an online survey, which we were told by the city um, completely blew out of the water any responses to that date. Um, they'd never seen that kind of response to an online survey that the city had um, developed. So it told us, and I think that the survey results, um, I think you have access to those. If not, I will certainly send them to you, but we included them in an, as an amendment to our comprehensive plan. So you can see that there is tremendous interest and support among our citizenry for arts and culture. Um, I'm actually looking through those survey results now. Yeah, pretty impressive. Um, so um, once we got the responses to the survey, we began the slow and uh, methodical and thoughtful process of writing our proposed comprehensive plan. Um, we were very fortunate to have join our committee and now as a vice chair of our arts commission, Robin Avni, who isn't with us today. And I'm, I'm so disappointed that she isn't because she was so instrumental in um, helping us in leading us in crafting our element. Um, Robin is now, in addition to being a vice chair of this arts commission, she's on the state arts commission. She is a, was a member of For Culture in King County and helped write uh, the King County Comprehensive Plan, uh, arts, arts Comprehensive Plan, um, and is so, um, uh, uh, her knowledge of this process is so deep. So I'm very sad that she's not here today, but she helped us um, put together our plan. Our, our committee included um, the executive director of the History Museum, uh, two city council members, um, the president of a nonprofit, uh, the Great Greater Gig Harbor Arts Alliance, um, uh, myself, and two other arts commissioners, uh, and a couple of business people that have since retired. Um, so it was a it, it represented business, art, culture, um, the city. Um, and um, was, a, was a pretty representative, I think, grassroots organization. So what we came up with is what you have in your hands right now. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the long, that's the short way of telling the long story. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, and, I, and I'm sure there, there are nuances in the story that I will still learn here in the, in the, in the coming months. Uh, you know, a first a first scan of the survey. I was I was impressed that you were looking at both production of arts and consumption of arts. You know, people beginning to realize that things like cooking is also an art form. You know, and that uh, and that reading you know, is active consumption of art produced by another. And so, you know, I think I think it's one of those things where the survey helped to reveal a lot of what is under the radar. Uh, in the arts and culture world. Uh, and so I think that the, the survey not only gave you some good information that you can use, but I think it also was a great PR tool to help people understand, you know, how, how uh, pervasive arts and culture is and just what they do in their, in their daily life. Yeah. So I, th I, think, I think that was really masterful. Um, uh, also, it, it seemed to uh, take into account both private and public venues for art. Uh, which I thought was a nice twist. You know, you go see a movie, you know, there you go. That's a, it's a, so, so it get, gets to some of the accessibility uh, of, of the arts environment too. So anyway, I think, I think it's really, really kind of cool. And one of the things about having it as a standalone element is that it's easier than to tie in how arts relate to more than just parks and recreation. You know, it relates to land use decisions, relates to transportation, perhaps we're looking at beautifying transportation corridors. Uh, it it uh, translates to economic development for sure. That even came up in Olga's conversation. Uh, so there, there are things that, uh, that I think having it as a standalone element will really help, help the city do when it's time to make policy related decisions and really kind of remind them that arts and culture are an important factor to consider in almost everything that the community is, is looking to do. Uh, so when we when we look back, I guess the the first time that there was an arts commission was back in what two thousand one, uh, when you were looking at that uh, fisherman sculpture uh, opportunity. 
Um, so what, what types of things would you say are your proudest accomplishments over the last 20 years um, as an arts institution in Gig Harbor? Um, it, do any of you commissioners want to jump in on that, Lynn or Jennifer or Samantha? Lynn, you're probably the, the, the longest serving commissioner of our current, a current group that's here. I, I, I don't want to put you on the honest of what particular projects or I, accomplishments. I, I, I'll jump into that and then Lynn, rather than put you on the spot, and I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, recently, we were able to, um, with the council's blessing, reinstitute a grants program um, that um, for the last two years, well, two and a half maybe, have supported creative endeavors of many kinds in Gig Harbor. And we've given very small, modest grants to um, high school bands, to um, um, poetry readings, to um, help, help me out here, Lynn and Jennifer. Um, uh, well, the latest uh, scavenger hunt and that was a fun, creative, new thing, the local band boosters. Right. So uh, that's, that's a real important accomplishment um, that the art, the, on behalf of the Arts Commission um, that has just recently been reinstated. There was a grants program for um, eight or nine years that was curtailed in 2008 by the tanking of the economy. And the city council simply um, couldn't find money in the budget to support, um, to give the Arts Commission the 20 or $25,000 to make these grants. We were able three years ago to um, convince them that yes, there is a need for them. And um, one, one of the things that I think we all agree, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of the importance of the grants is that they show that art is more than statues and parks. We've given grants to poetry, to music, uh, not to dance yet, but um, um, to film, to the film festival. Um, so we're, we're demonstrating to the people of Gig Harbor that there are many forms of art and um, they touch our lives in many ways and enrich us in many ways, uh, not to mention the tremendous economic benefit that the arts can have. So we've also put statues in parks. Um, since I've been on the Arts Commission, we've done one, two, three, four or five different um, uh, commissions for art in parks. Um, so, so, you know, we honor that kind of art as well. We've also served as jurors on several um, art shows, which is kind of exciting. I mean, that's all um, visual art but um, uh, we're, we're trying to expand our reach into the community. Any others, um, any other commissioners wanna jump in on that? I have something. Um, I don't have the long memory that Charlie has cause I moved to the area in 2011, but I moved from Bellingham which is a very artistically diverse community. And when I first moved here, it was a struggle cause I, didn't see it as open and in the community. It wasn't integrated to various levels of the community. Certainly uh, not as a mom with young kids, it was kind of tough to find those outlets at that time. We could find them in Tacoma, but not so much here in Gig Harbor. And I really feel like there's been just in the last 10 years, a, a, a dynamic growth, a very exp an exponential growth in bringing this into all levels of the community and continuing to do that with these programs and things like this. I think it's really important. And, you know, so it kind of strikes people when they come here that that's an important aspect of our community. And I think that we're getting there. Um, so, so it's not, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think, yeah, I think that grant program is one of my, is like the most favorite thing that we do as far as helping people in our community fund their artistic endeavors. Um, it's, it's gives community outreach. It reminds people that we have, our city has an arts commission. 
Um, uh, and um, also something that occurred to me is, is the conversations we've had where um, sometimes it's not appropriate to put art somewhere. We had those pillar, we had some pillars out and we had art on them. And it was sort of, we ended up deciding that was kind of a forced effort to put art in front of people and we remove them. And I think knowing where art is not appropriate is important. We talked about wrapping electrical boxes and discussed how maybe we don't need to just put art everywhere because there's a blank canvas. So art is also the environment and art is important when it suits the environment, not just because there's a space to put something, you know, you have to consider the whole experience in that, you know, in that environment, in the community. So um, it's, it's thought filled artistic placement. It, and thank you, Lynn. Um, right. Any other um, thoughts from commissioners of things that we've done that are, that are important? Okay, Bill, did we answer your questions? Uh, you, you did, and I, and I saw Carl raised his hand. I'm interested to see. I, I just wanted to ask a quick question. The, um, the, the carved um, uh, tree snags uh, over in Grandview Forest Park, I, I noticed those the other day, and then I read something about them somewhere. I think they're really cool and worth mention, and I'd love to hear the background or the story on those, actually. Oh, Lynn, you want to talk about that? Yeah, okay, speaking of something I, I am really proud of, uh, yeah, the, uh, I think it was a few years ago, Carl, do you remember when Granby Forest had all those, the uh, root rot and a lot, of, a lot of trees had to be tagged and analyzed and um, I, I don't know, 50 some trees maybe were cut, cut down, um, yeah. but a lot of them they left behind the snags that are 15, 20 feet tall. And anyway, so yeah, I, I, I was inspired uh, one day by the existence of those snags and what we could do with them and presented to the Arts Commission this idea to create, um, to put out a call for artists and get local carvers or other, other artists involved in um, artistically embellishing these snags and creating a little fun discovery as people are going through our city parks. So we call it Harbor Arbor Art. And um, we've had two installments so far. They're both in Grandview Forest. I'm hoping we can work on a third installment this year. So we're on track to do one installment every year, but we have a lack of snags actually. The, the snags are the, the trees that are cut down to a certain height. So we do have a, a fortunately or unfortunately, a lack of um, trees. And I was in Grandview Forest again and, and the, uh, um, uh, the um, one of the departments, Parks Department or somebody cut down one of the trees and they left like four foot stump. And I was like, why, why didn't they notify us that this was happening? So that was a missed opportunity. Anyway, I realized I have to do a little more outreach to our internal uh, departments to remind them that whenever there's a tree that might be coming down um, that we would like to consider as part of our Harbor Arbor Art Project. Um, yeah, so it's fun. We also have um, more snags in Grandview Forest than I think any other city park. So it's important that we start um, expanding this project to other city parks. Um, and, and that's the fun of it too. It's an ongoing project. Ho hopefully it will just continue to, to go on. And one day we might have a collection of a couple dozen of these uh, carved and otherwise embellished snags all over Gig Harbor for people to discover. Mm -hmm. Very cool, catchy name too. Thanks. Like <laughs> uh, you know your, your your comments just now and and earlier um, anticipated another question I wanted to ask you. You know, it, it, it's it seems like after after being in existence for twenty years, you're at something of a transition point as a as a commission where, you know, you're you you've you've been um, how can I say working to establish and upgrade credibility as, as arts is a worthy pursuit in, in Gig Harbor, um, where maybe the emphasis has 
initially was maybe opportunistic uh, and you know taking advantage of things as they presented uh, or, or maybe really just doing what you can to make a statement uh, and, and introduce arts in whatever dimension uh, into the community, uh, community fabric. Uh, but it seems like you may be at a, something of a transition part, transition point where there's maybe more discernment in what that statement may need to be. Uh, and so there's, there's an element of discretion that is probably working its way into your arts commission conversations. Um, and I'm, and I'm wondering if you have, um, if you have conversations about how to manage that discretion, now, do you have, do you have an arts plan or do you have a vision or do you have something that helps you yeah, in that, in that discernment process? You know, how do you, how do you maybe identify opportunities for, for art? How do you evaluate or screen applications for like your creative endeavors, a uh, grant application and how do you decide to fund them or support them? Uh, I think I'd like to maybe learn a little bit more about, about that uh, so that, so that we can anticipate this continuing maturing of the arts commission uh, as you really work into that more strategic policy world. <laughs> Um, we have put forward some goals, I think five goals in our um, uh, proposed element. Um, gosh, you ask several questions there, Bill. Um, let me, it's, it's what I do, sorry. Let me take the, the most recent one, which is the one that is uh, sticking in my mind, which is how do we discern who we fund in the Creative Endeavor grants? Um, how, how do we... How do we move forward with that? Um, commissioners, would any of you like to respond to that? We, um, well, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll jump in again. Um, <clears throat> we um, worked very hard to craft a, um, an appropriate call for art, which we have, uh, we quickly learned was kind of a work in progress. Um, the first year, we weren't quite clear on some of our questions or some of our requirements. So the next year, we clarified those. And the next year, we clarified them a little bit more. I think we're pretty close to having it nailed. And uh, Josh was very, very helpful in um, helping us put together that call for art because of his experience in Port Townsend. Am I right, Josh? Um, so thank you again for that. Um, <clears throat> we we put out the call for art and our city's marketing director uh, helps us distribute that. We also personally um, uh, send it to arts organizations or artists that we are personally involved with and put it on the Tacoma listserv and so forth. The, um, all the applicants have to be in Gig Harbor and their, um, their projects need to be in Gig Harbor. So we're very, um, hyper local with that. And then we, um, as a group, we um, interview the applicants. Everybody comes and, well, last year was a Zoom presentation, but <clears throat> excuse me, each applicant um, comes and makes a presentation to the commission, um, describing their project a little bit more. And then we have an opportunity to ask the applicant questions uh, to clarify anything that we might not understand or to maybe offer suggestions. And um, then uh, the Arts Commission again meets to review uh, our notes from the interviews and review each application and um, look at how much money we have. Molly makes a chart that says <laughs> we have $25,000 this year and this group is asking for 26,000, so we definitely have to get them to sharpen their pencils. Um, and um, it's, it's kind of objective. We have a, a matrix um, by which we weigh certain um, criteria for each grant. Um, and um, we talk about the benefits, the pros and cons, the drawbacks, um, the uh, possibilities of each project. And um, we do some arm wrestling in a very friendly way and we um, somehow allocate our, our, our budget. Mm -hmm. and you, then, you, 
Go ahead. You, you, you alluded to five goals that you have in the draft element. I imagine yeah. your criteria reference those or, or somehow are drawn from those? Uh, sort of. Um, as I said, the criteria are that they, they kind of evolve. The, um, well, let me just find what we ask in our creative endeavor grants. Um, we, we want them to, we want to have um, uh, a variety of things that we find, that we fund. Um, we want to have projects that will engage uh, to, the, to the extent that they can, the most diverse um, audience. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our score sheet, let's just, for example, let me look at the score sheet here. And Charlie, while you're looking at that, the criteria are really around the mission of the Arts Commission, which is to provide the best public benefit um, through our activities and dollars. So the types of things that, that rubric is really looking for is what is the public benefit? How many people are going to be impacted? And is it accessible to as many people? I would say that that rubric for those grants is more about that mission of the Arts Commission than anything in the cultural element proposal. Mm -hmm. Well said, thank you, Samantha. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see that there's maybe a place in the element to help with that? Um, I mean, as thinking as, as how the Arts Commission is going to be existing from generation of members to the next generation of members, you know, you want to have an element of continuity that will you know, sustain that kind of. Well, our, our first goal in, the, in our proposed element, for example, relates to um, economic vitality. And our goal is to enhance the quality of life in Gig Harbor by creating an environment in which artistic and cultural activities flourish. Um, and I, I think we're working hard to do that. We want to, um, um, and I'm just reading from our, um, our proposed element here, provide arts and cultural leadership for the city as advocates to the mayor and council for the development of arts and culture activities for the benefit of our citizens. Um, we wanna collaborate with the tourism and marketing department uh, to increase artistic and historic and cultural tourism, which is also an economic draw um, and which could include things like um, TCC's Right in the Harbor Conference, for example. Um, strengthen and um, strengthen the operational capacity of the arts, heritage, and cultural community through the development of the City Arts Fund, which we're trying to do to support grants. Um, and uh, continue to collect data. We want to, up at some point, um, uh, redo our survey and re-poll the community to see um, has there been a change in um, people's attitudes toward the arts as more people have come in uh, are more people interested in the arts or are fewer people paying attention to creative and artistic endeavors um, and to solicit and, and that uh, segues into solicit regular feedback from the community through surveys and interviews um, so I think that that, um, uh, we specifically talk about the grants program in that goal. Do you think we need, to, do we need to add to that, Bill? Um, I don't know yet. I'd, I'd love to see a copy of that score sheet uh, that you've used. Oh, what, okay. I, what, what, what I'd like to be able to do is to reinforce your successes to whatever extent we can in terms of policy. Uh, I'd also like to make sure that we're acknowledging these kinds of interrelationships between what you're doing in arts and culture and what the community wants to achieve in its other elements. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if I, if I can understand more about the kind of messaging and mission implementation that you're activating through your grants program, I think that'll make the policy language stronger and more inclusive. So that's, that's what I'm shooting for there. Um, also, uh, I don't know if you're dealing with a lot of donated art, you know, if, if people are interested in contributing something um, that they have, uh, and if they're not yet, they surely will be. 
and uh, and I expect that you'll probably have uh, or find some value in a discernment program, either on what you accept or where you put what you get. Um, so that's another I, thing to okay. think about. I, I maybe have a, a kind of an answer to that. And Molly, do you want to quickly, um, or Josh, talk about um, uh, accepting artistic donations? You mean as a city, is it? Yeah. Because there, there's kind of a city policy that overrides the Arts Commission's policy. Well, we, we have a city policy for accepting art. Um, it just is basically leaves it up to the mayor under a certain amount threshold. I think it's $5,000. Um, but as far as how we display it or where we put it, it's, uh, there's no policy for that per se. We don't really have much room left to put anything anywhere. Yeah. But I, you know, it reminds me, we asked for another thousand dollars in this year's budget so we, that we could purchase art from the uh, local art shows, and which we did, two, was that two, last year, was that two years? Two years ago. Two years ago, we purchased one piece of art. And then when the city council was reviewing our budget, they were like, why is there a thousand dollars here for purchasing art? And they sort of did away with it. We don't need any more. We have too much art. It's the catalog, it's not cataloged, I don't know what happened, but they, they weren't interested in us purchasing any more art. Um, I imagine they'd be happy with people giving giving us art, but there's, they, uh, we have trouble with where to put things, I guess. <laughs> right, one, and that's very true. And one of our current projects, um, Bill, is we're um, putting together a catalog of the uh, art that the city does own, um, which includes all the pictures on people's walls and city hall and the public works department and um, the public art um, statuary throughout town. And um, there's a lot of stuff on that list. And um, um, some of it, nobody even remembers where it came from but, um, or why it's hanging on this particular wall. So that's, that's kind of a formidable project that the mm -hmm. Arts Commission is uh, working on as we speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we were doing a strategic art plan for Port Angeles a couple of years ago, and part of it was also um, redeveloping their commercial waterfront. And there were scads of donated memorial benches uh, along, along the waterfront, and they had not been cataloged. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we had to go through the process of cataloging all of the art on the waterfront. Um, and and some, some of the donations were contingent on specific, lo specific locational considerations mm -hmm. you know, that were, that were you know, included in, in the donation letter. So yeah, that implementing donated art policy can be, can be tricky uh, and, and time consuming. So are there, are, are there other programs Oh, Lynn, were you going to say something? No, uh, Bill, I, I should have asked you this in the beginning. Um, I, can you explain? Because I, I have, I'm not familiar with how this whole uh, comprehensive plan writing works and and all that. And I, I think I um, was under the impression that all the text had been kind of put together and that you were going to just finesse it. So obviously, you're doing a a lot more than that. Can you give, just explain what your role is uh, in this project? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I can tackle it at a at a high level way and say I think that, that my role is to optimize the work that the commission's done in the 2018 draft so it's most effective. Uh, and so I, I don't think that that I'm in a in a position to try to suggest amendments to the goal language that the commission had come up with. Uh, but I think I'm in a position to make sure that it's really working uh, strategically well with other elements of the comprehensive plan. Uh, and, and I also want to take the opportunity to suggest uh, specific program opportunities that may come out of the policy direction that the Arts Commission has suggested. So um, I, I don't know if you've um, included, I, I, need, I need to go through this a little, little bit more carefully, but I don't know if you've included something like an artist in residence uh, type of um, language in this, you know, but maybe, maybe coordinating with partners for artists in residence programs, uh, maybe even with TCC, 
you know, or, or with, uh, with local museums is, is an opportunity that, that can surface in this element. So, so that's, that, that's really what I'm trying to do here is I'm, as I'm trying to make sure that there are, are ways to integrate the policy that you've already come up with uh, into the comprehensive plan and also to help find ways to implement it so it's clear and powerful and, and also endures. You know, it's something that's going to survive survive the years and, and hopefully be forward looking enough so that you have a reliable document that you can reference for years to come. That's great. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. I just wanted to know like what, how I might be able to contribute to this conversation based on what it is your, what your goals are. And um, so it sounds like you can then come back to us and recommend additions to the comprehensive plan that, or the, the sort of template that has already been put together. Yeah. Right, right. That, that's, that is what I hope to do. And, and, and Carl has told me that the city is looking at doing a more comprehensive, comprehensive update here in the next couple of years. Uh, so, so, I, I, so I think we're going to wind up building wow. a, a, a compendium of information that may find a new kind of home in that, in that new element as well. So, right. so what, I, what I would ask in, in direct response to your, to your second question here is to uh, consider programs uh, and implementation opportunities that don't already have have a home in the draft that you conducted in 2018, maybe reflecting over the last three years, um, and and see if there are specific things that you'd like to be able to achieve um, that may not already be in this. Huh. I think that would that would that would be really really wow. helpful for me. Okay, thank you. I I just didn't realize those are the kinds of things that go into this language of the comprehensive plan. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been I've been a planner for a very long time now, uh, and I was humbled when uh, at an interview actually for the city of Ellensburg, and it's probably about 15, 16 years ago, they asked me what my greatest achievement was as a planner, and I had no good answer. And that was because when, when I was writing plans, I, I didn't always accompany them with an implementation rubric, you know, so people could understand actually how to put in action uh, the policies that the plan uh, had stated. And so really ever since then, I have been very focused on implementation so that people can really see uh, the efforts of their work uh, at the policy level. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, like when I'm not very familiar with the process of creating a comprehensive plan. This is my first time kind of witnessing this. Is this like a strategic plan in business? So in other words, is there a timeline that this comprehensive plan uh, is supposed to be useful for, and then it gets revisited and updated, or is it a really, really long-range plan? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. It, it's it's something of a combination of both long-range and short-range. You know, I think um, you'll you'll see a strategic plan usually has a five-year horizon. Comprehensive plans usually have a twenty-year horizon. Um, so what what um, what we try to do with with plans these days is we try to acknowledge that. Uh, our plans really are or can be used as, as a very handy way to set budgets and to arrange priorities. Uh, and that's really more on the short-term scheme. Uh, and so, so we, we try to write a plan that, that plays in both worlds, one that's relevant for you know, the more immediate budget decisions that the city has to make, uh, but then also still has policy that is, I'll just use a term I used before, is enduring so that it can survive changes in administration, changes in council, uh, and really give you a compass heading for the next 20 years. I love doing this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, not, not everybody does. And so sometimes I'll get in the weeds and get pretty wonky on things. And, you know, sometimes you'd have to slap me across the face and tell me to stop. But, you know, I, I think, I think we want to make sure that, that what comes out of this is relevant for you as a commission so that it helps you do the work you need to do. Uh, and sometimes that's going to be short range in nature, and sometimes that's going to be long range in nature. And this element probably has to be in both. Mm -hmm. So to that point, then, should a part of our comprehensive plan, because we have a lot of really broad scope, you know, I would say the enduring policy that you're talking about, like the direction we want to go. But do we need to be setting up budgets, at least some sort of financial plan to support the implementation, like in the first, say, five years? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think that's that's something where the commission is going to be advising the council probably as a matter of business. Uh, you know, so you're 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 going to you're going to be lobbying for the creative endeavors grant to continue. You're going to be doing a number of things. You know, maybe there's maybe there is an artist in residence program that comes up. You know, and the, and the city is asked to help sponsor it. So you're going to be you're going to be participating at that level, and the city council is going to be putting the budgets together. 
um, but you need to be able to argue for them, right? So hope, hopefully, hopefully the, the plan will give you the tools that you need to do that. I mean, and, and, and what you have here in the draft element, it already goes a long way. I mean, you're, you're speaking to the relevance of arts and culture in the community in this very large and, and strategic context. Uh, and so now, now what we want to make sure we do is that we back that up with enough information that is both long range, but also, you know, pretty tangible so that you have that opportunity to argue for the things that you want to see. Is that, is that fair, Carl? Is that, is that the way that uh, things generally work in Gig Harbor? Yeah, I couldn't have said it any better, Bill. That, that's all, uh, that's exactly, you all exactly right. Uh, as far as conference planning goes. And I, and I was going to throw in, um, uh, in answer to sort of, or in support of the discussion we were having previously about implementation, um, you know, we don't really have any standards per se uh, that are uh, directly related to placement of public art. You know, we use our site planning process uh, for the most part uh, when uh, a piece of art is going to be placed, you know, a physical piece of art is going to be placed, of course. And like we've said here, art can take on a lot of different meaning and come in a lot of different forms. Um, but as far as, you know, the physical placement of art, we don't really have a, we don't really have any um, standards for the implementation of that. Now, that said, we are right now going through uh, an amendment to our Shoreline Master Program to, for placement of art within the shoreline jurisdiction uh, on publicly owned property only. So it's only related to publicly owned property and it's relative to the shoreline um, jurisdiction in the shoreline master program. So that's, that's kind of the first foray that I'm aware of, of um, any kind of real uh, implementation standards uh, for public art. Is there, um... Is there a move to do a public art fund or fee tax, something uh, related to a per uh, percentage of project budget? I, I saw it noted in the material in the, in yeah. the file, but you know, it's three years old. Uh, has there been a conversation since then about it? I'll, I'll uh, defer to the chair on that. Uh, there has not been a conversation since then, um, mostly because we've just been um, waiting, hoping, um, visualizing with all our might that this could move forward. Um, so, and, and have been, um, uh, have understood that really there wasn't anything, I mean, once, once our, um, proposed element was filed, um, there was really nothing that we could do, um, with it or on it, um, except just advocate for it. So we haven't, that's what we've done is just advocate for it. Um, and we haven't done any specific things that would, um, uh, you know, like, like uh, tr try, to, try to move it, or try to make amendments to it is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yes, we did, um, we, we as the um, citizens group, had a lot of discussion about um, some kind of, um, um, oh gosh, now I can't remember the words. Um, um, help me, Josh, or somebody. The tax that, like, you, when you're getting a, an impact fee. An impact fee. Impact sure. fee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, of putting an art impact fee on uh, building permits, for example. And um, our uh, ad hoc committee spent many hours discussing the possibility of that and um, kind of came to the conclusion that, yeah, we think that's a wonderful idea, but um, we would be, we will tiptoe very carefully into that realm at this point. But yes, we would love to see an impact fee that includes um, money for art. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, and this, this I also gets to the points that, that Lynn and Jennifer made too, is that, you know, your, your policy uh, already suggests, uh, you know, expanding the public art fund or um, explore the funding of public art purchases through a variety of resources. So you have a really fine, I think, foundation 
at a policy level, if that's something that you want to do, to ask for a program, you know, something that's a task that's, that's identifiable and assignable, a program to develop some kind of a public art fee or contribution that's expected from development. You know, so I mean, I think I think what 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 you've done is actually a pretty sophisticated way of laying the foundation for that. Uh, and so, what I what I would ask uh, is that maybe there are other specific things that you would really like the city to be in a position to do related to arts and culture. Um, and then tell me what those ideas are, not necessarily right now, but you know, over the next couple of months, tell me what those ideas are. And then take a critical look at the policy that you developed in 2018 and see if that provides for you the kind of foundation that you'd want to be able to fall back on when it's time to make that pitch to council. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, and so I, I, I wanted to um, also, and I know I've take, taken quite a bit of your time today, and I appreciate this, it. This is your meeting, Bill. We have, we're, we've devoted this meeting after Olga was finished with her presentation. Um, you own us. Wow. Well, that's power I didn't expect. <laughs> How's that for power? <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be gentle. Um, so um, I'm, I'm curious what, what your individual backgrounds are uh, coming into the commission. Um, so maybe maybe each one of you can talk to me a little bit about what what the commission brings to you, what you bring to the commission, and where do you find your, your individual joy uh, out of this work? Okay, who, I'll go last. Who wants to start? Lynn? Um, Dan? Oh my gosh, I wish I had prepared something profound. Uh, um, what I do for a living is I'm a graphic designer um, and a part-time artist, um, painter. Uh, and I don't know, joining the Arts Commission a few years ago has just been one of the joys of my life uh, as far as, because I've, I've been involved in attending city meetings, city council meetings and government. I know I like to know what's going on and contribute somehow, but not until I was on the arts commission did I feel like I actually had something to bring to the table and rep while representing the public, being mindful of public money, the resident, the uh, city's money, the uh, residents money what's the word i'm thinking of anyway the taxpayers communities, communities pe the people's money um that we're responsible for uh and i just get so much joy out of um seeing things come to fruition and uh and being involved in our city in a way that i think has an impact that a lot of people kind of take for granted they don't realize what art does in their lives you don't realize what art does for you out in the community until it's not there um so it's almost a subtle impact that it has but it's very profound so i just i just love being involved at, at this level and um collaborating with with everyone um, i love the discussions and the differences of opinion and and uh, and and seeing things um happen out there in our community that make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right. Dan, you want to go next? OK. Uh, well, I'm a scientist, basically. But I've been a uh, lifetime artist as well. And I was on the city council or the arts commission for Wenatchee for about six years. And in that capacity, we had a plan where any um, public monies that were spent for installations, improvements to buildings, whatever, new construction, that 1% of it, I think it was 1%, it might have been a little bit more, 1% of it had to be reserved for art. And that 1%, we would consult with them as to making the building or the, the project uh, more, can, more amenable to the beauty of the city within their budget. And in the 1%, we would go out for bid for them and um, choose 
a project like we've on the side of a, a, a public works building, we put a, a 20 foot mosaic using parts from the city's boneyard, from the public works boneyard, valves and switches and things like this that got incorporated in that. And then inside the building, we took old, um, thrown away, um, what do you call it? Um, not manhole covers, but they were square or rectangular for the city water department over the years. And we put a painting or a photograph or something and, that, and then hang it in, inside the building. So, and that was done through our committee. And we would not do it ourselves. We hung the stuff ourselves, it turned out <laughs> to keep it in, within budget. But uh, we would uh, consult with the builder, with the architects, et cetera. And they would, they would help us improve, approve and improve whatever we were suggesting. Anyway, that's my background. Thank you. Thank you much, Dan. Uh, Samantha. Well, hello, I'm Samantha Kelly. Uh, my background, um, I have a 25 year um, background in both arts education and arts administration, primarily in the art museum world. Um, I currently run a small arts education nonprofit for teenagers working in photography and leadership. Um, and I think what both brings me to the Art Commission and also is a, a motivating factor in my life, both in my work and my personal life, is finding opportunities to build connection and community where people feel valued, where they can contribute, where they can realize their full potential through the arts. Um, that, that weaves its way through my professional life as well as my personal life and joining the Arts Commission uh, was a way outside of work uh, to bring bring that into the community that I call home. Um, one of the things that I am both interested in and excited about this, this process, um, so many of us on this Arts Commission are new in the last year. Um, in fact, I don't even know if it's been a year. I don't think it's even been a year since we joined. Yeah, COVID has compressed year. time, so I literally can't remember our first meeting. Um, but the majority of us have not even been on the commission for a year, so definitely weren't part of the development of this comprehensive plan. Uh, this, this plan has been casually referred to as our strategic plan, but we have not operationalized referencing it. Um, making decisions around it. And so I am both looking for um, opportunities to, as you said, you know, we've been a commission for 20 years and in the, in any lifespan of an organization, of a commission, of a group of people, there's this arc and, and we're kind of at that arc where we've, we've grown, we've like professionalized. Um, and so how do we take it to that next level to be super intentional about our work and to capitalize and really realize these hopes and dreams in this, this plan by intentional discussion and decision-making power. Um, so I would, would be super um, appreciative as you're reviewing this plan, because it's a document we've all read, but we don't, we don't do much with it on the regular. You know, how do we bring a more formalized and thoughtful discussion into all of our meetings around either these five goals or if they're not the right five goals, you know, what do we need to do so that we are living this out and advancing this um, every time we meet? Thank you, Samantha. Um, so the next picture that I see on my screen is Jennifer. Hi, my name is Jennifer. Um, Samantha is kind of a hard one to follow. That was so well articulated. <laughs> um, I have I'm also new to the commission within this last year, and uh, the, I kind of bring a scattershot of experience, I guess. I am trained as a natural science illustrator, and I do that as just as a hobby more than anything, uh, with occasional little pay checks that come my way for that. But my day job is more I'm a finance manager at the History Museum here in Gig Harbor, and I also worked at a uh, 
another nonprofit that, that did uh, environmental education. And so for me, what I'm primarily interested in is the use of art as a way to engage in the world around us. And that can mean something different for everybody. For me, it's through natural science illustration and nature journaling and maybe artifact journaling here at the museum in the future. Um, but for somebody else that might be music or poetry and it's a way not only to personally engage but maybe to share your perspectives with other people and to learn from each other. So fundamentally that's what I find important and value. Um, here at the Arts Commission, this is just totally a new experience for me as far as being involved in the public process. And so that's just a huge learning curve and has really been uh, interesting to see and to see just how much input and discussion and uh, examination goes into every little detail. And I think that that's uh, a really positive thing. And so it's, it's you know, before this, you just kind of see the end product as a, as a resident, but now seeing the entire process is really valuable. And I too am excited about this comprehensive plan because I think not only does it give us for our commission guidance, but it also helps um, guide bigger possible programs and funding and other things, not only for the arts, but the cultural institutions, because we have a lot of history here in Gig Harbor. Um, so I think that that's really important as well, that maybe we can start to pull a lot of uh, different organizations that have all been working in their own directions, maybe a little more together and to work kind of combine forces and have a greater pull because of it. Thank you, Jennifer. Nicely done. And Linda. Are, are you there, Linda? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, there's not much more I can add to any of those nice um, inputs from everybody else. Um, I've got 35 years of federal government um, uh, under my belt, and I would uh, I am just an artist by heart, and I would like to see the art in the community. That's why I joined this um, commission. Um, okay, thanks. Thank you, Linda. Um, um, Bill, as you can see, four, four of our members are very new. Um, and I'm sorry that Robin isn't here. I think I gave a little bit of um, information to you about Robin Avni who has been on the commission for, I guess, two or three years. Um, she is a member of the State Arts Commission and has a wonderful, she's an artist, a visual painter, and um, has a wonderful background in um, uh, arts um, funding and uh, working with the arts in, um, um, various sort of jurisdictional capacities. Uh, and I'm not doing her justice, but um, she's not here, so I can't, um, can't let her talk. Um, my, I've been on the Arts Commission now for quite a while, 10 years maybe, um, and have been chair for maybe six, five or six. Um, and um, I'm a writer and um, a journalist, my first career was in marketing and advertising, um, which I did, well, still kind of do for um, many decades. And then decided uh, journalism sounded like um, something that I could get much more um, passionately involved in. So I've been a journalist now for about 15 years and wrote, um, for a weekly newspaper that was that went on for 10 years and then uh, ended in 2018 and we are this far from bringing a new newspaper to gig harbor which i'll, I'll also be writing for so um words are my art and um, um i feel very passionately about um, making connections with other community groups I'm a member of several other local arts groups. My husband is a metal sculptor. Um, so I'm, I'm I and our many of our friends are 
musicians or artists, dancers. Um, so um, my personal life is surrounded with creativity. And um, I just feel very strongly about bringing art to, into people's lives, bringing the, the arts into people's lives and making connections through the arts. Celebrating our, celebrating our creative spirits. I'm in. <laughs> well, that's excellent. This, this, this is really, really exciting. And, and I'm, I'm feeling especially honored to be working with you all uh, on this, on this plan. Yeah, as I, as I reflect on to, uh, or on the things that, that you were saying, um, I think, I think when you're looking at arts and culture, you are probably more challenged than most in trying to translate the abstract to the tangible. And that's, uh, that's, that's something that, that this element, if we're successful, will make easier for you uh, so that you can really make your case, uh, find agreement, and, uh, and get, get results that you can look at, point to, maybe measure. Um, but even then, when you start measuring, you know, kind of short changes, maybe the more ethereal elements of, of the art and culture world. So I, I don't know that we're necessarily going to head in that direction, but still think, things that you can you can look look back on as achievements down the road. Um, I also think about the survey uh, that, that you conducted, and, and, and Jennifer reminds me of, of your comments, uh, that there's probably some latent demand here for people to either be producers or consumers of art in Gig Harbor. And I think, um, you know, to the extent that this process will be a public one, maybe it'll stir the pot a little bit. Uh, but uh, I suspect that, that your continued prominence on the public scene is going to have fertile soil um, to work in, in Gig Harbor. Um, I'm excited also to hear that, that many of the members of the commission are relatively new on the scene. Uh, and, I, and I think that that gives us an opportunity to take a look at the 2018 draft uh, and make sure that it really is, is representative of where, where you are today as a commission. Uh, it probably is, but it's always nice to check for two reasons, both so it helps orient the new commissioners, um, uh, but then it also brings in a new generation's voice into the policy that's going to carry even future generations uh, along, along this path. Um, and then, you know, I think as a, as a planner, uh, I'm gonna start thinking about my own artistic inclinations, but as, as a planner, I think that a lot of my art is in, is in education and building capacity. Uh, and I'm hoping that through, through this process, um, the commission is able to become um, maybe even more effective in getting its aims met uh, in the organization uh, of, of the city and, and uh, among the community. And I will, I will do my level best to work with you so that, so that you have an understanding of the process that it's taking to build this thing, uh, but then also uh, really have, have a solid um, confidence in its relevance to the work that you have going, going forward. So um, with, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for now. Uh, I am curious to know if there are other individuals that I should speak with uh, I definitely want to follow up with Robin, uh, but if there are other individuals who think I should speak with in the community uh, who will add to my understanding of what's going on in the arts community in Gig Harbor, um, I would certainly welcome uh, a name and an email so I can make, make that contact. And, uh, Bill, I'll be happy to provide you with several names. Um, I did invite um, the members of our ad hoc committee to this meeting, but um, and I and I got positive responses from several of them, but I have a feeling that they were not able to log in mm. earlier. So um, I will also give you their contact information um, because they were involved in the creation of this 2018 version, and I'm sure can fill in blanks that I've um, omitted inadvertently. Mm. And um, um, I'll also be thinking of other uh, people that are involved in arts in the community that um, um, could be could be advocates or even business people that um, I think see the economic benefit of art. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I can give you a whole list. Oh, I was going to say, Charlie, uh, Barbara, 
Gresham Hammerman is in the audience if you would like her to speak. She didn't raise her hand, but I just wanted you to know that she is uh, an attendee. Um, it, we'll see if she wants to say something. Barbara, if you want to speak, will you raise your hand? Doesn't look like it, so. Okay, okay. Oh, she just raised her hand, sorry. Okay. Hi there, everybody. Hi, Barbara. I will, I, hello, Mr. Grimes. It's delightful to hear from you. I'm so excited about this process. I'll take about uh, 34 seconds because I know you've got a full agenda, but um, I, I am a member of the community. I am involved in both uh, song and um, presentational arts. I am very excited and honored to be the recipient of one of the cultural endeavor grants and um, another source of grants from the city of Gig Harbor. We are creating an event which will happen for the first time in Gig Harbor. It's an international event. You're invited to come, it's on June 21st and it's called Make Music Day and it's for the whole community. Um, I am very excited to hear everybody's perspective and something that I just, one, I'd love to talk to you if you'd like to speak with me. So you could put me on that list. Um, I just wanted to mention that everybody that spoke today, I think I'm, I heard the word connection in every, everybody's presentation today or just comments. And for me, that is the heart of arts. It's connecting people uh, to parts of themselves and to others and to the community. And I think we are the fulcrum for many parts of the community that don't even know that arts play that role. Um, and I'm, I'm just honored to be in a community that values that. So thank you, Molly, for pointing out that I'm here. And I too am very, very sad that I won't be able to call you three days from now and say <laughs> help. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Barbara. And um, Bill, so you're a little more familiar with Barbara, although she'll tell you all this, I'm sure. Um, she's the founder and executive director of United by Music North America, which is a, um, an organization, a nonprofit that um, identifies um, um, people, alter abled people that show musical promise and through a process of auditioning, um, her group um, identifies um, um, uh, alter-abled individuals that could be musicians, uh, links them up with professional musicians as mentors, and then creates performance opportunities for them. And the United by Music Band is going to be one of the performers at the Make Music Day on uh, the 21st, the summer solstice, uh, to which we hope you will come. So that, that's, uh, and I will give you Barbara's uh, contact information. And oh, and Barbara was on our ad hoc committee of citizens that uh, helped craft this element. Okay, well, thank you very much. And Barbara, I look forward to a longer conversation with you here in the next week or so. Wow, great stuff. I really, really do, do appreciate every comment and every moment you've, you've spent today with me. I, I do appreciate that. And, and Olga, also thank you for, for allowing me to listen into your presentation. I think it's just, just a thrill to see the dimensions coming out here. So uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll, Carl, are there any other comments you wanna make? Otherwise, I'll just hand it back to you, Charlie. Okay. Oh, I'm, I think that's good. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Carl, thank you. And thank you, Carl, for mentioning the uh, Harbor Arbor art. Yeah, you're welcome. I really like that project. Oh, good. Thank you. We're glad you like it. Thank you. Um, okay, so commissioners, um, I guess we are going to jump back onto our agenda, which I somehow have managed to close. Um, so let me get it back up here. We want, I think, Come on, open file. There we go. Um, Creative Endeavor grant update. Is there any discussion on the discussion that we've just had? I think it's pretty exciting. And thank you all for 
um, all your contributions to it. Um, uh, trying to be mindful of the time that we have left. Creative Endeavor grant updates. Um, let's see, uh, the band boosters had their final, I mean the band, the Gig Harbor High School band had their final concert last night. And I will send you all a link to the YouTube video that was made of that concert. Um, a couple of us tried to get into it through Facebook and weren't able to. So, um, but um, uh, Ms. Gabe, the Bam Boosters chair has um, sent me a link to the YouTube video of the concert. I'll share that with you so that we can all experience the, uh, our Creative Endeavor grant dollars at work. Um, as Barbara mentioned to you, uh, the Make Music Day um, event, which we also funded, happens on summer solstice, uh, uh, the 21st, uh, which is two, well, about 10 days from now. And that it all happens in uh, Gig Harbor North, uh, no, Uptown Gig Harbor, I'm sorry, Uptown Gig Harbor, starting at about 11.45 or noon. And there will be musical stages and musical performances throughout the Uptown Gig Harbor area. And it promises to be a wonderful, lively, inclusive, creative musical day, including a parade that will be, um, that will include a um, pizza box drum corps, which sounds wonderful. Uh, any other creative endeavor? Oh, we've heard from um, uh, the poetry um, people, and we've heard from the, um, the scavenger hunt people. The scavenger hunt has, is up and running, and they had very good response to their first go round, and I believe their second go round is starting very soon. Um, and they send us regular updates. The poetry, um, poetry in the harbor, the um, published poems that are going to be on little placards uh, throughout the, um, the the Donkey Creek area and Donkey Creek Park. Um, the, they've gotten their permits and they're moving forward with having the plaques created. Um, the Poetry Alliance, um, I haven't heard from them, but I know recently, but I know that they're moving forward with poetry events, uh, probably starting in August and then September and October. And um, Molly, have we heard of any others from any others? Or Josh? Um, hands on art. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hands on art um, completed their series for this school year. Um, and they sent us some wonderful photos, which I think you all received. Um, um, they'll start up again in, no, in September, I believe. Um, have I forgotten any? I just want to say the, the scavenger hunt one is called Gnomes Away From Home. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get the, um, the email I sent with the picture? So I was downtown. I didn't even know that Justin had started his his project yet uh, out publicly. And I was sitting at Kelly's cafe and I heard someone walk by saying, blah, 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 gnomes away from home. And I went, oh, it must have already started. And I looked around and saw those posters uh, for uh, missing, was it say missing gnomes and help me find my way or something. And I oh, was so excited. I wrote to Justin and said, oh, hi, I've heard the buzz going around town. And he wrote me about, back that uh, at that point, that was, I don't know, when was that? A week or two ago. He had gotten about oh, almost 200 people signed up at his website to participate in this. The first four gnomes had already been found and claimed. And so there was a, it sounds like there's a really good buzz. He said he was completely overwhelmed and unprepared for that kind of, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say unprepared. He was, he was very surprised by that huge reaction that he got so, so quickly. So, um, I get the feeling, I haven't talked with him, but I got the feeling he was super excited about how it's all going. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more to go. I think he has 20 gnomes total that will be hidden and uh, with prizes. So it's gonna continue for a couple months, couple more months, I think. Right, yeah. 
Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful, very creative, kind of off the wall, but it's involving so many people in our community. Very special project. Um, again, our creative grant dollars at work. Um, any other talk about the creative endeavor grants? Any questions or comments about that? Um, Harbor Stinson sidewalk art project update. Um, Molly or Josh, have you heard anything more from Jeff? I have not. There was an email that he sent and I forwarded it to the rest of the group that basically just said that this is kind of on hold, but he'll, as soon as he knows something, he'll share it with you probably for your next meeting. Right, okay, very good. That's it. And um, we have about eight minutes left. Um, the historic markers update, um, uh, I met, the mayor and I met with um, community volunteers and tribal representatives yesterday to finalize the, the text on those. And that will be the focus of our special meeting this coming Friday at nine o'clock. And Jennifer Keating from the tribe um, and perhaps a couple of her other tribal members will attend that meeting uh, and uh, share with us the text that they, that the tribe has approved and um, we'll ask our blessing on it. So uh, I look forward to having all of you that can attend that meeting with us. So um, any new business? Uh, any commissioners comments or reports? Other than um, hope to see you at Make Music Day on the 21st. Um, I don't have anything. Anybody doing anything special artistically? Lynn, your, your ukulele group is going to be performing. Yeah, thanks for that plug, yeah. Uh, yeah, the ukulele all-stars will be at Uptown Gig Harbor for Make Music Day, participating in uh, the song farmers group and uh you don't want to miss that <laughs> <laughs> no no throwing of tomatoes or other <laughs> garbage yeah but yeah we're looking forward to that that's going to be an awesome day june 21st right and part of this part of the song farmers it's a jam session so if any of you are musicians and want to bring your instrument uh, or even just your voice and join in the Song Farmers Jam. Um, show up at, at Uptown Gig Harbor next on the summer solstice and um, sing or play along. Is there a schedule of events or website for that um, event? I will send you the link. We just got it uh, yesterday. Um, Barbara Hammerman provided that to us. So um, I will send that to everyone and you can uh, see all the bands that are playing and what time and where opportunities for community participation are. It's gonna be a wonderful event. Um, Hi, Charlie, I'm sorry, yes. I've got a lunch date and so I'm gonna to have to run. God bless all of you and we'll see you out and on the other side of uh, other side of work here. I wanna show you Molly, thank you. And gave me the bird, I got the bird for <laughs> Lynn. The bird's name is now Crazy Happy Lynn. And I <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm just going to smile and think of not only Lynn, but all of you. Thank you for being patient with me over the years. Oh, Molly, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Josh, um, we're, we got your back, okay? But uh, <laughs> we're going to miss Molly, but we're going to love you. So thank you. Um, I guess I just want to, um, Molly, thank you so much for all you've done to keep us on the straight and narrow and... Um, Oh, how much support you've given us. What a wonderful voice you've been. 10,000 bows, thank you. <laughs> so uh, before I find myself weeping, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, everyone, I'll see you Friday morning. Thank you so much, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.